Uh, hello. So let us now start with uh, accounts and uh, let's see what the accounts of the most advanced form of business, which is the uh, limited company. What does it look like? OK, so when you're talking about accounts, as we already discussed in accounts, we make three different reports. Uh, the first is the income statement. Of course, if you are in business, you are in business for the ultimate purpose of making a profit. So this report shows whether you've made a profit or a loss at the end of the year. And in this video, we are going to concentrate on this report only. There is another video on uh, cash flows and there will be another one on the balance sheet. So let's look at the income statement. What is an income statement? The income statement is a record of revenue costs profits over a given period of time. So please do keep in mind, this is not a still picture of profit at a particular point in time. That's the important thing that differentiates this report from, let's say, the balance sheet. The balance sheet, we will see what it is, but the balance sheet is something that is um, taken at a particular point in time. So, but not the uh, not the income statement. Income statement is also called profit and loss account. Full name, trading and profit and loss account. It's the same thing. The old name is trading and profit and loss account. And this is, uh, now it's called the income statement. So the income statement is sometimes, in fact, usually it is produced for internal use. It's an internal report, but if you are a limited company, what happens? Your reports need to be published. So, so in, in a limited company, this report is to be published, um, uh, but that is less detailed uh, with some accompanying notes. So the first part of the income statement is the trading account. As we said, the trading account, it's, it's the old name is trading and profit and loss account. The first part is the trading account. What does the trading account show? These are the broad heads. The trading account shows the sales. Sales is the accounting term for revenue. What is revenue? Number of units sold multiplied by the price per unit. So what you earn by selling all the uh, all your goods, that is your sales revenue or simply sales. Minus the cost of goods sold. Don't use the word cost of sales. It's cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold means the things that you have sold, what was the cost of manufacturing or procuring? So let's say you make mobiles uh, and the cost of making the mobile is 50,000. You sell the mobile for, um, let's say, 100,000. I'm talking about one unit. You make it for 50,000. You sell it for 100,000. The cost is 50,000. The price is 100,000. The difference between them, gross profit. Here you are. Okay. Uh, I, I use the word 100,000 in this account. It's 250,000 minus 100,000. So your profit is 150,000. Your trading account is complete here. Then the second part of the income statement comes, which is the profit and loss account. The profit and loss account includes expenses. Expenses um, that are there for running the business. Uh, in accounts, we use the word overheads. So whether we say overheads or we say revenue expenses, it's the same thing. Salaries, electricity, accruals, uh, operating, prof uh, 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 operating expenses. So these are the various things which are included in this section. You minus these expenses uh, that you will get your net profit for sole trader net profit for partnership but in the limited company this is called the operating profit also sometimes called ebit earning before interest and tax okay uh, keep in mind the formula for cost of goods sold because sometimes uh, you'll have to calculate it so the cost of goods sold the formula for cost of goods sold is opening stock plus the purchases of stock during the year minus the closing stock. That is the cost of goods sold. Okay, now, once you um, have the operating profit in a company, you cannot take that profit home. 
what happens? You'll have to pay interest on it. Interest on any loans. Sorry, interest from it. So interest on any loans that you may have taken. If you have taken, let's say, a loan of 100,000 and you have to pay 10% interest, then minus interest from the operating profit. All right. There are two things that you have to pay from the operating profit, the interest and the tax. But do not pay tax first. If you write tax first, answer is wrong. OK, you pay interest first. That's because, uh, as you know from the last video, interest is tax deductible. It goes down by the factor of the interest that you pay. So first you minus the interest, then you minus the tax, and then you reach the uh, final, the, up, the, the net profit, the final profit, or the profit for the year, whatever. But even then, you do not stop here. This is not something where you, uh, where, which you can, or the directors, or the owners, or which in this case are the shareholders, they will take home. No. Then you open another account. That account is called the profit and loss appropriations account. Okay, what happens in the profit and loss appropriations account? You take the net profit and you appropriate it. You give it, you divide it into two parts. You give one part to the shareholders. The part that you give to the shareholder is called the dividend. Okay, you, you give it to the shareholder, that's the dividend. What is left is retained earning or retained profit. The retained earning is retained inside the business inside the company for future uh, uh, use. It can be used for future expansion and stuff like that. OK, so the income statement has various uses. Now, that's important for you to remember. It, it is used to measure and compare the performance of the business over time. There are two ways in which you compare business performance. Compare the business with itself over time and with other businesses. And every profit, every, every uh, uh, year, the company has an expectation of profit. So this statement can also be used to uh, compare the actual profit with the expected profit. Bankers need uh, this statement to see if they should lend money to the business. Investors need this statement to see if they uh, should uh, uh, invest in, in this business. OK, so uh, so this is uh, the income statement. Now, from this income statement comes two very important uh, ratios. OK, what are ratios? Ratios are basically the language that is used by the financial analyst to read the account. The account has been made. There are only numbers there. How do you read it? You need ratios. So first ratio that that uh, is there is gross profit margin whenever you say margin you are talking about uh sales you you comparing gross profit with sales but please 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 don't forget to multiply this by 100 it's a percentage that's the first ratio so calculate the gross profit margin for this okay if the gross profit margin is 20 percent, what does it mean it means that out of 100 out, out of every hundred dollars 20 is the profit now, look at the second, net profit margin. Net profit margin means uh, that uh, the net profit, which we calculated, take it as a percentage of sales. OK, so whenever you're saying margin, it simply means um, as a percentage of sales. There is another profitability ratio, the third, which is the more accepted, the more realistic. Why? That is. ROCE, return on capital employed. Return means net profit. In business, return means net profit. Divided by what is capital employed? All the uh, all the money which is invested in assets. That's the bottom line of the balance sheet. So you will take it from there and you write capital employed. Okay. Now, this is a, is a more realistic ratio for two reasons. Why? Because whenever I'm looking at an investment, if I'm putting money in a company, I'm not concerned with what sales they are making. I'm only concerned with what money I'm going to get, what percentage I'm going to get over the investment that I'm making. I'm a shareholder. I'm investing 100,000. I'm not interested in what the sales of the company are. And that's not really my interest. I'm not even interested in what 
the actual uh, absolute figure of profit is. All my interest is that if I invest 100,000 in the company, what percentage return will I get? And that uh, question is answered for the shareholder by ROC. ROC also has another very important function. It helps me compare uh, companies of different sizes. If there are two companies, one is a large one, one is a small one. So how do I how do I compare the two? I will compare the two very easily by using the ratio. For example, let's say there is one company which is a which is a small company and it has a capital employed of uh, let's say hundred thousand. Okay, uh, let's say it has hundred thousand worth of capital. All right, and it makes a profit of twenty five thousand. What is the return on capital employed? This is a small company. It has a small capital base. The assets are less. But how much return am I getting? 25%. How do I compare it with a large company? I cannot compare it with a large company if it is only absolute numbers. In absolute terms, they can't be compared. But if it's a larger company, and let's say it has an asset of uh, 1 million, it has capital employed 1 million, and it has uh, 50,000. Okay. So if you divide it, 1 million. Okay. Uh, 1 million divided by 50,000 divided by 1 million. So we are going to get. A return of 5% maybe. Okay, let's calculate this. 5% return, right? So uh, even though the company, the second company is larger, even though the second company is larger, return on that is less. And I can now compare this larger company with the smaller company. I, I can compare X with Y. Why? Because I have uh, converted both of them into percentage returns. So that is the great attraction of ROC, percentage returns. Okay. So now let's look at uh, some of the things that you have to keep in mind when you are calculating these ratios. Okay. What 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 do you what what do you do? Let's say in the profitability ratio, the gross profit margin is initially very high. All right. Um, so. Um, so if it is very high, but the net profit margin falls drastically. So now that should ring a bell in your mind. Why is it falling so drastically? Why has it gone down so drastically? Now, there are certain reasons uh, where gross, pro gross profit margin is less. Okay, But that may not necessarily be a result of mismanagement. Sometimes uh, companies keep profits less um, deliberately in order to increase their sales. So these are the things that you need to uh, keep in mind. And uh, this is very important for analysis. Um, so uh, um, the, sa the same is uh, true of, uh, let's say, um, the same will translate into low returns on capital employed. So what the main thing here is that you cannot immediately say just by looking at something, that the company is bad. No, you have to think why that something is happening and analyze it and probe the reasons behind it and analyze the reasons behind it. Okay, please do read this up from your uh, from your text. And if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comment section. Thank you very much indeed.